Nani here. Welcome back to my channel. You can call me Nani. Um, please like, comment, and s please like, comment, subscribe, and share. Um, I I've learned uh, giving a like uh, definitely helps my channel. Um, and obviously subscribing and sharing it helps to move my channel up to where more people can find it uh, and the people that I want to find it are the people that I think could benefit from it which are the chronically ill or anyone that's a caregiver of someone that is chronically ill um, I do do some fun stuff you know uh, tomorrow we're gonna do a mukbang but um, today I want to talk about something that has to do with small fiber neuropathy specifically because that's what I have. I mean, you can apply it to any of your doctor's appointments, but this is specifically for small fiber neuropathy. Now, keep in mind, I'm not a doctor. Um, I'm just speaking from my own experience. These are my opinions. That does not mean they are fact. So, uh, use your own, um, you know, decision-making process to decide if you're having trouble with your doctor, how to move forward. But I can just tell you my experience and tell you some of the experiences of the people, uh, from the multiple Facebook groups that I'm in regarding chronic illness, chronic pain, small fiber neuropathy, and such. Obviously, I would never share names. Um, but there's, I've seen a lot of, I, I was so lucky to uh, find a neurologist that on my very first visit said, okay, I think this could be small fiber neuropathy. And I was like, what? All I heard was like fiber. And I was like, what are you talking about fiber? Like small fiber what does that mean? And she kind of explained it to me. Um, but I just kind of wrote it down and was like, okay. But she checked me for everything. You know, she did the EMG. She did the nerve conduction study. Um, I will tell you, with my first nerve conduction study, I took Xanax. So, I remember nothing. Because I didn't want to feel any pain. Because... I have um, not just a phobia. I thought it was just the dentist. But it turns out I have a phobia of any place where I'm being forced to be still. And someone is hurting me or doing something to me that is scary to me or that I don't like. And that stems from the abuse. So, which I've talked about before. Um, so... I have no problem just telling doctors, like, now I'll tell them straight up, like, listen, this is the shit that I had to deal with. This is why I have this phobia. I'm going to be taking Xanax. I did ask her before the procedure, is it cool if I take Xanax? Because if not, I'm going to freak out and I probably won't be able to do the procedure. And she said, it's fine, it's fine. And my husband was with me and he said I did everything that she told me to do where you have to, like, she, they stick these needles in you or whatever and then they ask you to like lift up an arm or lift up a leg or whatever and then they zap you. I remember nothing from that visit. Um, so, uh, I'm not sure if that affected my nerves ability to respond the way that they should have. And that, that nerve conduction study and EMG is to see if you have large fiber involvement in your neuropathy. So as far as I'm concerned for right now, uh, and according to my doctor, I only have small fiber neuropathy. Uh, but they do say over time it could progress to large fiber. Um, I don't know off the top of my hand what those symptoms are. They do seem to be more, um, oh God, what is it? 
uh, muscular something, but I've always had muscle involvement. Like that's been most of my problem is muscle involvement. So my pain has been more, it like, it seems more like fibromyalgia, but I do occasionally get the weird, you know, I get the burning, I get the weird sensations where one time it felt like there was um, a hot fan blowing on the back of one of my calves. And I literally had to look down just to make sure, like, did someone stick a hot fan down here? And it wasn't. It just, that's what it felt like. Um, sometimes I feel cold water running down my legs and I have to check, like, what's happening and it, it's, nothing's there. Um, and it's those kind of sensations, uh, or, or sharp shooting pains or... Uh, just lots of fun different things, but here's what I wanted to talk about So when I went to her she did all of the studies to eliminate large fiber involvement to eliminate MS she did a, a, a CT scan of my brain she checked my um, thoracic and cervical or my thoracic and cervical spine. She did not check my lumbar, which I think she should have because I have a ton of pain in my um, lower back, my lumbar. And that's where most of my back pain is. So much that I use a heating pad about 24 seven on it. Uh, and I now have, uh, it's, it's pitiful looking. It's just pitiful. I may have in a, in a, uh, I'll, I'll figure out a way to do it to where maybe I could show you, but it would not be distasteful because it's on my lower back. Um, you know, I wouldn't want it to be, uh, something that shouldn't be on YouTube. You know what I mean? So, but basically the skin back there is, completely different than the rest of my skin. I, it looks like a giraffe, kind of a giraffe print. It's swirly and brown and there's little blisters and all that. Basically, I'm I'm burning my skin, uh, slowly cooking myself. <laughs> Whoops, sorry. But um, anyway, um, if I don't do that, then the pain is unspeakably bad. It's at, at its worst. It's at a le level 10. I would have to go to an emergency room for uh, pain assistance if I did not use that. And that's with the regular pain meds that I use. So when you go see your neurologist, now I've seen some stories where people go to their neurologist their neurologist will do the same thing mine did, which is rule out everything but small fiber neuropathy first. And then what they'll do is they'll tell them, there's a couple of different scenarios. Well, you've got the symptoms of small fiber neuropathy, so let's just go, go ahead and say you have it since there's no real treatment anyway, and none of the tests indicate that you have this, this, or this, which would cause small fiber neuropathy. So it would be idiopathic, which means there is no treatment, there is no cure. So we'll just give you the medication that might help, put you on gabapentin, put you on Lyrica, put you on this or that, and uh, you know, good luck to you. Um, they don't even offer to, to do a biopsy. Now that could be, maybe they don't know about the biopsy kit. Maybe they don't know how to do it and they don't want to tell you that they don't know because they don't they just don't want to learn or they're afraid to do it or it maybe it's a pain in the butt because they come in these little kits with everything that your doctor will need to do the small uh the skin punch biopsy which if you've ever so when you go to a dermatologist and you have like a mole or whatever they go way deeper I think the one uh, for small fiber neuropathy, they go three centimeters deep, which is nothing. Um, and they just go in and they have this tool 
and it's like at the tip of it it's got a sharp just all the way around it's a sharp circle but it's hollow inside so they take it and they just punch it right on your skin and when they pick it up they have a circular little chunk three centimeter chunk of your skin right because that's where your small nerve fibers are now my doctor took because of my symptoms took uh, samples from my lower uh, all on the right side even though my left side was the worst and continues to be the worst um, she took them from like right above my ankle mid middle of my calf uh, right here and then right about here um, they use lidocaine to numb you before they do the punch. I didn't feel anything, again, because I took Xanax. So I felt nothing. I don't even remember the appointment. <laughs> so, um, and it's nothing. They put Band-Aids on it, and it just heals. Like, you don't need a stitch. You don't need, like... When you when you do punches at your dermatology office, you might need stitches because they're going way deeper, way deeper. Um, but neurologists might be nervous that like, well, this seems like a dermatology thing because we're taking samples from their skin, but it, it's not. It's their nerves, which is absolutely uh, falls under um, neurology. So. Um, if you have a doctor that's like, nah, we don't need you to do the sample, I would, I would say, fine, thank you, either insist on, like, if I can, you know, find a place, you know, if I can get you the kit, like, find a place that will send you the kit, whatever, you know, will you do it? If they say no, then I would find another neurologist, ask them on the phone, hey, do you guys do tests? For small fiber neuropathy the skin the skin punch for small fiber neuropathy they say yes make an appointment yada 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 get all your records from the first neurologist take them over there and it's going to be a lot easier you're not hopefully not going to have to go through all that emg and stuff again and the reason that i and i would insist on getting that test is a couple of things first of all for a doctor to tell you uh eh, you know it's probably this you don't really need to know you don't need the test it's it's it, it is what it is there's no help for you there's no treatment the treatment would be the same anyway so just you know i call bullshit because you need to know what's going on with your body you need to know what is wrong with your body and there's always going to be that thing in your mind without getting that test that's like, but what if it's not small fiber neuropathy? What if it's something else? You know what I mean? And also, I definitely think it helps to have a report in hand that states you have small fiber neuropathy. And it will tell you what kind because not all small fiber neuropathies are the same my small fiber neuropathy is non-length dependent and what that means is that I have it all over I have it on my upper body and my lower body it affects my autonomic system it affects every single part of my body some people it's only their upper body some people it's only their lower body um, now that could be because their doctor only tested their lower body, right? Um, so I would again ask your doctor, like, I want you to test my upper body. Well, you didn't say you had any symptoms in your arms or whatever, you know, because sometimes during appointments, we don't mention everything. We just mention the one thing that's hurting us. Luckily, my neurologist knew to ask me a lot of questions well what other things are you experiencing because at the time I went because my f my foot was absolutely killing me and there was no valid reason that anyone could find to answer why it was killing me so um, 
I would definitely insist that they check upper and lower and that any symptoms you have, you, you share with them. And for instance, for me, my upper body at the time, all it was was my, um, sorry, I'm trying to plug in my battery pack, my upper arms, uh, my forearms just burned. They felt like, and when I say burn, I mean like a really bad sunburn or like you, somebody peeled off the very first layer of the, the skin, like you scraped it off or something, and that's what it felt like. Uh, not a fun feeling, but that's what it felt like. And you know, you're thinking, you're not even thinking, I'm sorry, so sorry. You're not even thinking that that is an issue, right? Uh, but that would tell, that's what told my doctor, okay, well, she's got symptoms upper and lower. So we're going to test her for everything non-length dependent, which is why she took two samples. So she took four samples total. So I think that's the best bet, you know, but I've seen many, many, many people where they're like, well, my doctor took one sample. And I don't think that's good enough, but uh, whatever. So, but don't let your doctor, you know, when your doctor tells you, don't worry about it, like you don't need to know, it's the same, whatever, blah, blah, blah. No, that's an unacceptable answer to me. Like, you deserve to know if you have this thing or not. So get that report, because it could also help you down the road if you find that you are going to need uh, to go on disability. Hopefully you won't ever need to do that. But it's gonna be a lot easier getting that done if you have a report in hand from a neurologist that says you have small fiber neuropathy. If you just have something where your doctor's like, I suspect small fiber neuropathy, uh, started treatment with 300 milligrams of gabapentin every day you know that there's a huge difference between you have it and I suspect so um, be your own advocate if you are someone that has an issue doing that because I know that that can be a difficult thing to do especially you know with doctors they can be very short with you they can cut you off you know nurses everything um, and I know it can be intimidating. So if you are not good at talking with doctors or insisting that they do something, um, then take a friend with you or a family member or your mother or something like that that can be like, no, 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 no. This is how it's gonna go down. And if you can't do it, recommend to me a neurologist that will. And then if they're like, oh, we, we can't recommend anybody, find another one. You will find one that will do it. Some dermatologists will do the small fiber neuropathy uh, skin punch. Uh, but again, I would try to find a neurologist that will do it. Um, so that's it for now. That's the subject uh, that I wanted to touch on today because I would spend a lot of time in groups um, over the last few days since I was mostly bedridden and um, I I saw that going around unfortunately there were a lot of new um, patients uh, coming into the group that had no idea what was going on and they were having some trouble from their doctors um, you know paying attention to what they what the patient needed, you know what I mean? So you're the patient, you're the expert of your body. You know your body better than this doctor. So um, be your own advocate. Take someone with you to, to help you with that because I know it's hard. Um, but I, I, I really do sincerely hope that um, you get the answers that you need that this video has helped. If you do have any questions, please uh, leave a comment and I will reply. If you do not want your comment out there, uh, 
just email me at nannybanana2020. Uh, and it's literally N-O-N-I-B-A-N-A-N-A -A 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 2020. Um, you can email me privately if you have a question and I will be more than happy to uh, help you. But again, remember, I am not a doctor, I'm not a nurse, I'm not medically trained. I'm just talking to you about my own experiences because I've been dealing with this for so many years I've been around and around and around um, and I know it can be very scary being on that end of things uh, but it will get better so hang in there uh, try not to get down on yourself or um, let the fear or pain take over I hope you have a support system in your home but if not please think of me as a supporter and um, you know those I do highly recommend that you join the Facebook groups just type in small fiber neuropathy chronic illness oops sorry um, you'll find so many groups um, that can help you but anyway that is all for now. I hope you all have a very beautiful day. We're about to have a major storm. So, <laughs> uh, we had one last night too, which is probably why I haven't been feeling great. The weather definitely seems to um, dictate how shitty my day is going to be. But anyway, I hope you all have a great day and I will talk to you soon. Bye.